All right, our next fight is on self-driving cars, and David's got a David's got a, a, a section with him. This is great. Our first fighter is a gentleman named David Wussner. And interestingly enough, we have three German names on the fight card tonight. That was coincidental, but uh, I love it. David uh, was born and raised in Germany, uh, but he also is the GM of a uh, car company called Local Motors. Uh, and he is also a self-described son of Detroit, advises the city of Detroit. All right, I love his Germany connection. And you can figure out what side of the fight he's gonna be in. Please give it up for David Wussner. <laughs> okay, our next fighter, and this is going to be an interesting fight because we've got industry against government going on right here. And we have Jamie Boone, who's the senior director for government affairs. Wow. Wow. And clearly has her own fan club and is a Washington insider and is a drone fanatic and knows a fair amount about automation, please give it up for Jamie Boone. And she brought gloves. Ladies first. Jamie's going first, 45 seconds, you got all right. it. Awesome, first of all, who is excited for self-driving cars? All right, if anyone did not cheer, the exit is straight in the back. I'll see you later. No, but listen, if we want to have this technology anytime soon, we need the federal government to step up and clear the barriers out of the way. We have so many, so many vehicle uh, regulations on the books that are woefully out of date for self-driving. Things that have been on the books for 30, 40 years, things that self-driving vehicles aren't going to need, uh, steering wheels, brake pedals, you name it. So we need federal leadership to make sure that we clear those things out of the way, we untie the hands of regulator, or of innovators, sorry, and, uh, and get these things on the road. Uh, we need to make sure that there's a federal framework that across the nation, everyone has access to this technology and that we don't have a state patchwork, so. David, you have 45 seconds. All right, all right, this deck is stacked. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm from the D, so we'll keep it gully. Yeah. So first of all, this technology is here. It is not a couple years away. There is hype about it. But we don't need legislation or regulation right now, because it'll go the lesson of California, who legislated and regulated too early. And then you had to redo things, because technology is going to move faster. Technology will move faster than legislation and regulation. And plus, it's not just a federal thing, it's actually a UN thing, right? At the end of the day, the Geneva Convention and the Vienna Convention regulate the Road Traffic Safety Act in the world, which the US is a member to, and until they get their stuff straight, just going into a federal direction is too early. Jamie, you have 30 seconds. Sure. So you mentioned California. California is exactly the problem, and we're seeing states re replicate, replicate the California model and go and create their own rules. They, a lot of times, don't know anything about the, te the technology. So we need Congress to step in and say, hey, this is a national issue. This is the federal government's role to regulate safety in vehicles, and, but still do it in a way that uh, unties the hands, that allows for flexibility to make sure that we're not mandating things that shouldn't be mandated. David, you have 30 seconds. It, 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 again, the stack is, the deck is stacked. Sorry. Anyway. It's the outfit. The, anyway, the federal government um, should not regulate anything at this point until technology is actually proven. And the issue is companies like mine can make vehicles that didn't exist three years ago because we print them. So the issue it becomes, 
it's the safety standards can't just be thought of at the federal level because in the future you will be able to make vehicles that meet local requirements. So it's actually requiring all of us to think differently and not just at one national federal level. All right. Gene, you have the first question. Yeah, so I hear you guys arguing for and against regulations, but you're talking about regulations in the context of how we drive today, where the point of failure that can cause accidents is a single driver or two drivers. When we're looking at autonomous vehicles, self-driving cars, and you're talking about thousands, tens of thousands of vehicles reliant on something that if that's hacked, it's not just one or two people that can cause an issue. Should we have no regulations in place to deal with the fact that you go from one point of failure or two points of failure to potentially thousands of points of failure? Who wants to take it first? Well, I, go I, for it. I disagree with your premise because today vehicles can get hacked, right? And so at the end of the day, whether those get protected or not is really up to the manufacturer and we have to take those, whether there's regulation or not. At the end of the day, we want to put safe vehicles on the road because that's for the benefit of not just humankind, it's for the benefit of our pockets. Because if we don't put safe vehicles on the road, we won't sell many of them. So at the end of the day, whether there's regulation or not, I think in the best interest of business, we have to create safe vehicles. Jamie. Yeah, so what you need is a kind of a performance standard. You need to ensure that vehicles are safe, but you don't need to tell companies how to do that. The government is terrible at that. I mean, they have no idea what they're talking about. The, the place that survives is... <laughs> the, the, the place, the people that know how to do that is, is all of you, is the people that are actually creating this technology. So we need to leave it to them to do so. All right, all right. So Who she has said a question? no regulation. <laughs> Tim. <laughs> yes, so my question is, if you have this combined fleet of people that drive and these self-driving cars, how do you ensure safety if you don't have regulations and standardization? I, I never said we shouldn't have standardization. I just said it's too early to regulate the, the vehicles at the federal level until we actually know how the technology will be used. So we need to have pilots that get administered at a local and a state level to understand really how consumers and customers want to use this uh, technology. Now, I, I understand the challenge is we don't want 51 or 52, if you include Puerto Rico, different safety frameworks. That's obviously not what we want. But, but we do need the federal government to work with the local governments to understand what are the best use cases for this technology and get these vehicles on the road safely? Jamie. Okay. Here's the thing. Vehicles already are regulated at the federal level by NHTSA. There are federal vehicle safety standards. Those are those, those regulations from 30, 40 years ago that are a lot of them out of date. So what we need is for the government to step in and say, for Congress to step up and say, okay, we need a plan to address this. To, we need to rethink this so that there is flexibility that we can bring new solutions to the table and not lock in one technology. All right. Get out your phones. The voting has begun. You have 45 seconds to vote. Good luck, fighters. All right, pencils down. And do we have a winner, Jeevan? Jamie. Jamie. Jamie Boone. <laughs>